Hey, good afternoon. My name is Sean Masmum. I'm a dermatology research fellow at Cleveland Clinic, and today I will be uh, talking about multicentric reticular histocytosis and its association with malignancy. So today I will uh, talk a little bit about the disease. Um, I will talk about our uh, study on this and what we found, and then I will uh, go into the pathophysiology and the treatment option for this uh, fascinating condition. Um, I will refer to this condition as MR from now on. It's a rare non-Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Uh, uh, it's a multi-systemic uh, disease. However, skin and joints are most commonly uh, involved. Weber and Frudental were perhaps the first people to adequately describe the first case of MR back in 1937. And since then, only less than 300 cases of MR have ever been reported. And most significantly, 25 to 33% of these cases are associated with a malignancy. The clinical hallmark of MR are these smooth, uh, skin-colored to reddish-brown papules and nodules on the face, uh, hands, fingers, and a periangal coral bead-like appearance. And as I mentioned, this condition affects um, joints uh, significantly, and as you can see on the top images of the AP of the hands, there is <clears throat> significant joint space narrowing, there is um, osteophyte formation, there is uh, subchondral um, sclerosis, altogether severe arthritis. And then looking at the top left image, you can see um, significant uh, bone resorption of the phalanges, um, pseudosubluxation at the, um, at the metacarpal phalangeal joints, and then you can see that there is significant arthritic changes at the wrist joint. <clears throat> Altogether, uh, giving that clinical image of uh, telescoping and shortening of the images that uh, is associated with this condition. So severe arthritic changes. On histopathology, um, you can see a dense dermal infiltrate uh, composed of uh, mononuclear cells, cells with a relatively normal uh, epidermis. On a higher power, these uh, dense dermal infiltrate is composed of uh, histiocytes, and you can see some uh, giant cells as well. Now, a higher power of those giant cells show uh, that these are up uh, foreign body type, and you can see that uh, ground glass cytoplasm that is associated and it's ca characteristic of this uh, condition. However, not everyone agrees that this is a uh, perineoplastic condition. Uh, uh, some people believe that most cases are not associated with malignancy, so uh, it's probably not a perineoplastic uh, phenomenon. There's a wide range of malignancies associated with MR, and the MR and underlying um, malignancy not always um, run the same course. So then, is it just a coincidence? And this is the question that we had, um, but we wanted to systematically study this condition and look at the underlying relationship and pathophysiology to better understand it. So in our study, we did a comprehensive literature search looking at uh, various uh, search engines looked at all MR cases that ever reported since 1937 when the first adequate case was reported till now. And we obtained the English translation of some of the studies as well. And what we found was 56 cases in association with malignancies. What were our results? So females are twice as commonly affected as females with a two to one ratio of female to male. The age at the onset of MR presentation was 55, which was slightly higher than what was reported pre previously at age 45 for non-malignancy related cases. However, as you can see, a wide range of ages are associated with this condition. And of note, 70% of these uh, reports have been diagnosed and evaluated by dermatologists. In terms of the distribution of malignancies in MR, again, a wide range of malignancies are associated with gynecological, breast, respiratory, and GI being the most common types of malignancies. Um, but you can see that 
your logical is mentioned here. However, there has not been any report of prostate cancer ever in association with MR. And I will uh, talk about its significance uh, later in this talk. We found that 71% of the cancers were diagnosed within the first 12 months of MR presentation. That's interesting. But more significantly, 90% of the cancers were diagnosed within the first 24 months or the first two years of MR presentations. So we think that there is a strong temporal relationship between the uh, time of cancer diagnosis and the onset of MR. More about skin lesions. Um, they come in various sizes from millimeters to centimeters and from a few to hundreds of uh, lesions in uh, any patient and usually they appear in a cephalocaudal distribution. Um, you can see that hands, upper extremity and face is much more commonly involved than the lower extremity. In terms of the initial manifestation of MR, skin versus joints, previously in the non-malignancy cases, arthritis uh, occurred before the uh, skin lesions in about 50% of the patients. What about in our cohort? We found, on the other hand, that arthritis was only the first sign in 25% of the patient, and skin was, in fact, um, a more common um, and more, uh, it, it was the manifestation that occurred before arthritis in the majority of the patients. However, we think that this uh, finding is insignificant due to the small number of the cases. Any differences between the sexes? Well, as I mentioned, uh, it, it happens twice in females, uh, as in males. And there's slightly different uh, distribution of malignancies. In males, you can see that lung, myeloproliferative, and GI is the most common malignancies. And in females, gynecological, breast, and respiratory are the most common. Otherwise, um, other uh, features were similar in uh, both sexes. In terms of labs, um, we looked at every single labs that were reported in these uh, patients to see if there is any correlation and if there is any sensitive or specific uh, labs, but none of these appear to be um, either sensitive or specific. Um, I'm just going to draw your attention to the last um, rows in the table because previously it was um, reported that MR is associated with uh, hyperlipidemia in the majority of the patients, but as you can see in this uh, cohort, 92% of these patients had normal lipids, so probably no correlation. What is the pathophysiology of uh, this rare condition? Um, there are, so we know this is a rare condition and not much is known about it, but what we know is from various uh, studies looking at immunohistochemical markers in this condition, looking at CD CD13, CD14, 68, um, and the rest of the markers listed here that this is a uh, disease with macrophages behind it. Again, electron microscopy also looked at uh, these uh, uh, cells behind this condition, and uh, macrophages is the central cell type uh, in this disease. What else do we know about it? Um, we know that monocyte cumatractin protein, or MCP1, is perhaps a key factor in this disease. Uh, this protein is also known as macrophage and inflammatory protein, and it's found to be overexpressed in the overlying epidermis of a MR patient. But what is it? MCP1 is a trophic factor that induces monocyte migration into different tissues and maturation into different histiocytes. And this is what happens actually in MR, a very similar process. Several other studies have found that its concentration directly um, correlates with stages of several breast cancer. And we know MR is associated with uh, multiple uh, uh, malignancies. And another study, another recent study, found that uh, this protein is directly involved in extravasation, establishment, and persistent growth of uh, tumor cells, in other words, uh, metastases. And as you can see, um, or as I will talk about it later in this talk, a high percentage of these malignancies are metastasized at the time of MR presentations. So in conclusion, MCP1 um, or MIP1 acts as a major uh, tumor drive factor in this cohort, which is involved in recruiting um, circulating monocytes into joints and skin 
uh, as seen in MR, and also high rate of metastases seen in this uh, cohort. Any uh, role, uh, roles for uh, osteoclasts? Um, why do we even mention osteoclasts? Well, we know this is a, a condition with severe destructive arthritis. Uh, we know that bisphosphonates um, have been shown very effective to treat uh, this condition. And the same cytokines that are commonly found in this condition, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, prostaglandin-E2, and TNF-alpha, are all cytokines involved in osteoclastogenesis. And as you can see in this diagram, tumor cells, in fact, can directly or indirectly produce or induce these cytokines to ultimately uh, cause production of uh, osteoclasts. And as I mentioned, there's no report of prostate cancer with MR. So what is its significance? We know that prostate cancer is the most common cancer in males. Um, so there is some suspicion as why it hasn't been ever associated with MR. We know that it's a osteoblastic uh, prototype. So in other words, is it possible that only those malignancies capable of inducing osteoclastogenesis are what drives MR? And that's what we think it happens. So I mentioned that tumor cells can uh, cause bone resorption uh, through this process uh, shown in the diagram, but also bone um, stores a lot of growth factors. So once you have a high bone resorption in a condition such as MR, you're releasing all those growth factors and you're actually uh, pushing the new plastic growth and metastases, um, and that's a vicious cycle which we think exists in MR. <coughs> Another clever study looked at the direct uh, role of osteoclasts in MR, and what they did was they um, draw synovial fluid from the knee joint of an MR patient. They isolated the mononuclear cells from that fluid, and they cultured them with various uh, growth factors such as macrophage colony stimulating factor and rank ligand and TNF-alpha and so forth. These are known to induce osteoclastogenesis. What did they find? So they found that after culturing with these growth factors, those cells started to express tartrate-resistant acid phosphatase, or TRAP, which is a osteoclast-associated enzyme. They also stained these uh, cells with monoclonal antibody 23C6, which is a highly osteoclast-associated antigen, and they picked up those cells. They also showed in vitro that there is extensive osteoclast formation and lacunar resorption. And using electron microscopy, they found that 90% of those mononuclear cells were macrophages before culturing with those growth factors. And after the growth, almost all of those became osteoclasts. And finally, they treated that patient with pamidronate, which is a bisphosphonate, effectively. So this is only one study, and it was only one patient. More data is needed, more research is needed in this topic, but this was a very well-designed study and it clearly shows that there are evidence that the synovial fluid of MR patients contains numerous macrophages that are capable of uh, becoming osteoclast uh, if they're exposed to rank ligand, uh, MCSF, and TNF-alpha. Okay, in terms of treatment, what do, what do we know about treatment for this refractory condition? We know MR is a tough disease to treat. So what are the best options and what worked in this cohort? First, we wanted to look at the relationship between the malignancy outcome and MR. If you treat malignancy, is that gonna uh, treat MR? So we found that in a group of 24 patients, just treating their malignancy without directly um, trying to treat MR improve their completely uh, resolved skin or joint symptoms in 67% of those patients. And most significantly, 62% of those patients <clears throat> that were cured from their malignancy also improved or resolved their joints and or skin. So in summary, we think that there is a tight parallel course between the underlying malignancy and MR. What's the outcome? What's the outcome of these patients? Unfortunately, 
at the time of the MR presentation, 76% of these malignancies were metastasized, and 48% of these patients ultimately died. So we know that the um, outcome in these uh, patients is poor. Um, systemic medications that were used in this uh, condition, cyclophosphamide has been shown uh, traditionally that it works um, in this condition and can treat the, um, both skin and joint symptoms effectively. In this uh, cohort, we found that cyclophosphamide, with or without um, other medications, was used in nine patients, in four of them as the sole treatment, and improved or resolved their skin and or joint symptoms in 78% of the patients, including all those four patients that only received cyclophosphamide. However, there are hesitancy among physicians for its use because of its uh, side effect profile. Hemorrhagic cystitis is a known side effect, and um, most severely, uh, transitional bladder cell carcinoma that is seen with long-term use of cyclophosphamide. What about methotrexate? It was also used in nine patients. It was used in various doses. However, it was used in combination with chemotherapy or other treatment in the majority of the patients. Um, so although it improved joints or skin symptoms in 78% of the patients, the confounding effect of all those other medications and uh, chemo chemotherapeutic agents cannot be ruled out. So the data on this is inconclusive. What about bisphosphonates? We like bisphosphonates in this disease. We know it works. What about uh, in the uh, malignancy cohort? We know that three patients uh, had complete uh, improvement of their MR symptoms after um, they received uh, alendronate or zoledronate. On the other hand, another patient who, who received cholesteronate did not receive any uh, benefit from this medication. So again, the numbers here are low. Um, but one observation that we made was both alendronate and zoledronate are nitrogen-containing bisphosphonates as opposed to cholesterol, which is a non-nitrogenous uh, bisphosphonate. And what we found is that nitrogen-containing bisphosphonates actually have anti-neoplastic properties in addition to anti-osteoclastic properties. So that may be one reason that those two medications may be more beneficial in MR. And then there were a host of other medications such as NSAIDs, corticosteroids, nitrogen mustard, gold, tamoxifen, and D-penicillin amine that have been used um, for many patients and none have been proven effective. So uh, physicians should uh, stay away from using these medications altogether. So from our finding um, on how uh, different medications can work on this cohort, we propose a treatment algorithm. And we think that um, after the confirmed diagnosis of MR, there should be a comprehensive malignancy screening at the time of MR uh, presentation. And the patients thereafter needs to be closely monitored for at least two years. You remember, 90% of um, the malignancies presented within the first two years of MR presentation. So it's important to at least watch these patients uh, closely. <clears throat> In terms of treatment, um, obviously if the malignancy is associated, eradication of malignancy is the most important um, initial step because that can also treat the uh, MR in the majority of the patients as we've shown. And if there is any evidence of arthritis, we highly recommend uh, initiating bisphosphonates um, at the earliest uh, time possible because if you remember with the images, that the x-ray images that I've shown, uh, this disease, if left untreated, can lead to severe um, arthritis that is irreversible, essentially. Uh, steroids can be added, and they've shown some benefits when uh, they're in combination of other agents. And if there was a good response to this regimen, then uh, you can taper the prednisone in three to four months. Um, if there was a poor response, however, to that treatment, then um, other systemic agents such as methotrexate, cyclophosphamide, cyclosporin can be um, added, and um, uh, they have, again, shown uh, some effects in these patients. So in summary, there was strong evidence for the perineoplastic nature of this condition, as we found that there was a close temporal 
uh, relationship between the cancer diagnosis and MR. There was a uh, similar course of uh, disease between the malignancy and MR. And also, we know that there are other dermatoses, such as dermatomyositis, acanthosis, nigricans, sweet, and perineoplastic pemphigus that are perineoplastic in only a subset of patients, just like MR. We found that clinically, uh, this cord was not any different than the non-malignancy uh, MR cases, so it's not a distinct uh, subset of MR. And we know that macrophages and osteoclasts are central cell types in this uh, condition. And in terms of treatment, again, uh, treatment of malignancy is the priority, um, addition of bisphosphonates, plus minus systemic steroids, and then other agents such as cyclophosphamide, cyclosporin, or methotrexate should be uh, considered as well. <clears throat> Special thanks to my PI, Dr. Uh, Anthony Fernandez, for helping me uh, with this project. And currently, we're in the process of uh, submitting our paper. Any questions? Sure. Thank you. Um, that was all my work, mostly. Yeah, sure. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you.